Welcome everybody. It's 7.59, so I think maybe we should wait another 30 seconds before we actually start this officially. But um, that's just giving me time to once again remind everyone that if you're at this meeting, uh, at this hearing, you do need to sign in to the chat with your name and your address and your affiliation, if any. Um, so um, this is this is uh, this meeting. This hearing is all on Zoom, and so. When you, if you do have a question or a comment, uh, the first, first up, all questions and comments are going to be from the, from the ver from the two boards, and um, then from town officials who are here, if they would to pose any questions or make a comment, and then we, uh, if there's a butters that are other other boards and departments in town, and then um, a butters and then uh, members of the public. I think I got that right. If I don't get anything right, I'm, I'm counting on one other, uh, uh, other board members to tell me that. You can send me a private message and say, you did this incorrectly, but, or you can just say it out loud, I don't care. So um, we're gonna go ahead and open this uh, joint public hearing. Welcome everybody, thanks for coming. Um, so, I'm, I know that we have uh, Tom Johnson with us tonight, um, who's a project engineer for this, although I probably got your title wrong, Tom. I hope I didn't. And um, I don't know if I'm not seeing that Mr. Parisi is here yet. Yeah, no, uh, hi, uh, good evening. It's uh, Tom Johnson. Um, okay. Uh, Fran has to be had to be in two places at once. Um, he may join in a little bit, but um, okay. I'm I'm ready Great. to, to Great. roll. Thank for you. Next. Thank you. Thanks for making that clear. So um, I'm going to actually open this and ask if uh, members of the zoning board want to um, speak directly to this to these requests for variance, and if they have any particular questions or comments or anything they want to mull over right now. Anybody in the zoning board have a, a comment or a question? I guess I one thing I would like to say is that um, some of the, the letters that have come in uh, with comments have talked about whether um, people on the two boards have already made up their minds prior to any discussion. I just wanna assure anybody that's watching that, I know for myself, and I think I could speak for each of us that we have not come to our hearings with our mind made up. We're keeping an open mind through all this. And that we, uh, we have a responsibility to the town of Conway to represent the town's best interests, not our own personal feelings. I just wanna assure people of that because that was sort of a, a tenor of uh, the letters that did come in. So I did wanna say that. Mark, I think it would be I think it would be valuable if you remind everybody what the scope of the zoning variance decision is. Based, you read that out at the last meeting, and I think it would be helpful if you reminded everybody what that was again. In terms of the responsibilities of how a, a variance is decided upon, you mean? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, the way a variance is decided, and this is um, with Massachusetts general laws, is uh, it's, they call it a seven criteria for, for variance. Um, the first one is that the land or structure named in the variance petition, petition is uniquely and specifically impacted by soil conditions, uh, shape of the land parcel and the topography. The second is that circumstances do not generally affect land or other structures in the zoning district. Uh, the third one is that due to circumstances related to the soil shape or topography, you can see there's a, a, a general thread in this, the petitioner would suffer hardship if the zoning were to be enforced. In other words, to not um, grant a variance. The fourth is that the hardship may be financial or another hardship, but may, may not be personal for the petitioner, but affect other properties in the district and must relate to the soil shape or topography of the land. The fifth is that granting of the variance will not cause detriment to the public good or may even enhance it. 
in some way. The example they use, even though it's not relevant in this, is adding a street light, which would enhance road safety. Uh, the sixth one is uh, granting the variance would not nullify or degrade substantially the meaning or the intent of the zoning bylaws, which are, as we know, are uh, set by ta the town to town meeting. And the seventh is the owner cannot make reasonable use of the property under the existing zoning. And so those seven criteria, what we have to examine in making a decision whether to grant a variance in this case mm -hmm. for the height of the tower. Exactly. Thank you. That's was my next request. So the, the bylaw says that the, uh, that the tower cannot be taller than um, 120 feet. And the, the application is for the tower to be 156 feet. And again, that's the scope of the ZBA decision, right? That yes. and nothing else? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, um, well, I suppose the other way of uh, explaining that, uh, in the bylaw itself, which, um, let's see, where the, uh, says the Conway, uh, the Conway Planning Board, which also in, in this case would involve the zoning board for the um, variance, uh, that it would issue a special permit, or in this case, the, the um, zoning board of appeals to a du duly licensed wireless carrier. And as we've learned that um, the application is for by the the contractor for building the tower, not the actual carrier. So the thing that we'd be faced with is needing to designate, if we were to choose to do this, to designate Vertex as a representative of um, wireless carriers that would be contracted later on. And so it, I, I don't know if that's something that should be decided or moved and then voted on now or wait till just prior to a vote about the variance itself. Andy, I don't know if you have a, is Andy on yet? Yeah, he's here. Or he was Andy. here. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh, no, I don't have, I don't think we have to do that right away. I think we can wait. But wait till like before the, the vote itself, if we were to take that. Uh, yeah, I think that's, okay. that, that's correct. Okay. Then, then I would defer, um, you know, doing that till when we get to the position of uh, voting, if we get to that point. Oops. I actually have a question related to the height piece, and I don't know if this is the right place to ask it or or not. I think since since this is the zoning board <laughs> stepping in here, is this something I could? I just am curious about. Could you, you? I think you need to identify yourself and state where you live. Oh well, I'm Beth Bershman. I'm the chair of the planning board, and I live on Hazel Grove. <laughs> But the other way of looking at it is who are you addressing the question to? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good question. I'm. I would think I'd be addressing the question to um, either Tom Johnson or Fran Parisi, actually. Which by so, the way, makes means a Tom. Yeah. Oh no, no actually, Fran too. just jumped on here too. Oh, I'm, I'm here now. Well, there yeah. Is. Hi. So I guess my question is um, concerning the height of this particular tower. And if you could address specifically, when I look at the most recent um, Ashfield decision to permit a, a tower built by Vertex um, in Ashfield, that um, decision also had a variance going along with it. And um, there, I have to refer back to their bylaws. So their bylaws for the town of Ashfield are, um, their maximum height is 80 feet in their bylaw. And they, um, they uh, the applicant in this case, Vertex Tower Assets asked to vary it to 110 feet, 116 feet, its highest appurtenance. And um, the application in Conway is for a, is for a much higher tower. And so I'm just wondering, I know that these are different places, they're different <laughs> towns, but they're not how different of towns they are. So if somebody could address that specifically, why the different, why the significant difference in height? Uh, there's, that's a very long answer to a reasonable and short question. Um, it's very location specific. 
Um, okay. The site in Ashfield, um, we were kind of at the top of the ridge so that we were able to get coverage along the 116 corridor and also the 112 corridor going up towards Buckland with a yeah. tower 110 feet tall. And, and again, um, when, when we say we're building a tower 110 feet tall, we look at the low man on the totem pole because they have to get as equally adequate coverage as the, the high man. So, uh, so something like 80 feet was adequate there to cover the, um, um, the, the coverage gap. Um, here, um, um, you know, because of the topography and the hill that is really to the west, there's a pretty good sized hill between this site and downtown Conway where the water tank is. And then given the way the road curves around um, the hill that we're on, you know, we needed more height. The other thing that factors into that, quite frankly, is um, visibility. Um, you know, the, the Ashfield Tower was far more visible um, because of the pond and the access to the pond. And given the way the route, um, not so much 112, but 116, there was some pretty substantial vistas. So we took that into account. Here, um, you know, as we knew, as we knew was going to be the case, but as was clearly shown by the visibility demonstration, you know, the visibility here is not as dramatic. Where, um, uh, you know, the way the setback is, the way the slope is, the way the trees are, uh, you know, we uh, th those are both great visual buffers, but actual um, uh, impediments to getting the signal down into the valley. So uh, um, it. Uh, you know, we, we do extensive research. I think um, your consultant concurred with this to say that it really was the, the minimum height necessary to achieve the coverage objective. Uh, um, the other issue is the water tank in downtown is not that tall and it's an existing structure and carriers have used it and will be encouraged to use it. But when you're starting with something taller on, on, on shorter on one end, you need a uh, a taller tower at the next site to kind of connect up with the two and connect up with the three. Fran, if I might just add a couple couple thoughts there. Um, for folks that are familiar with Ashfield, um, the tower site there that was approved is on top of Ridge Hill, <clears throat> which is, um, there's the Ashfield Lake. And then if you're driving one down 112, and if you were to take a right into the center of town, if you look straight out your windshield, there's a, uh, transmission lines that come down across the hill. The tower is actually sitting up on the top of that peak, but it's on the peak of that ridge. So um, based on the topography, everything around it drops off. Uh, and so really to, to get past those impediments that Fran's talking about, the lowest carrier needs to just get above the top of the trees there. So um, the, the topography in this site in Conway is, is different. So it's, it's all, Goes into the sauce with the with the um, with the radio frequency analysis and and, and the heights are a, a result of that. Thank you. So, um, are there any related uh, questions from the zoning board for any of the variance requests? If, if I could respond to something that Mr. Silverman said a few minutes ago, right, I was getting on. Um, um, the, the variance request of the zoning board is for the height. Um, with respect to the fact that we're not a carrier, I believe the last uh, time we tried this, the town uh, reached out to council that advised that the zoning board didn't have to grant a variance from that if the planning board granted a uh, approved it with a condition that we don't build it. So I don't believe we've, I, I, we might have asked for a variance, but I think the appropriate, um, the appropriate response is if the boards, if each of the boards were so inclined, would be for the um, um, planning board to approve the site with a condition similar to the other one that we don't build it without a a licensed carrier, a committed licensed yeah, carrier. Yeah, right. I, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. That is the condition of the last special permit right. um, that was issued uh, for another cell tower in Conway. And that condition was that it not, uh, construction could not start until there was 
at least one, there was one licensed carrier who had contracted with Vertex to put their equipment on the tower. So that that was how um, that was addressed last time. So in a, in a sense, it's not that, I mean, granting a conditional variance or a special permit for that matter is something that the town council felt we could do it that way. Yes. So that way it, it right. complies as written by with the bylaw without having to designate a representative on the night that we vote on that. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I do, you can grant condition, you can put conditions in your variance decision. I, um, I don't know that the zoning board did because the planning board did. And you can make your um, zoning board approval subject to planning board approval because I'm not sure who's going first here. But, and I think the last time the zoning board did go first and, and uh, can make a condition that it's subject to planning board approval. And then uh, the planning board can make that condition. Yeah, we can discuss it. We did bring up the last time the question of whether <clears throat> we could condition it for two um, carriers, licensed carriers. And I don't remember the answer. I just remember that the answer was no. <laughs> uh, um, there's actually a very specific re there's actually a very specific reason for that. Uh, one of the other prohibitions in the um, 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 Telecommunications Act is that you not discriminate amongst carriers. So if the first carrier showed up today and said, we're ready, and you said, no, you got to wait for carrier number two, that's considered discriminatory. So, uh, um, and, uh, you know, from the town's perspective, uh, I agree with the thought that one should be committed, but uh, um, um, it, it's, it, from our perspective, it's di it difficult to uh, get multiple people committed at the same time. Um, and oftentimes um, we get the first one to commit um, based on the promise that we're gonna build it and then we build it and then people see it and attach onto it, which is exactly what happened in Colerain. So, uh, 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 so it's really hard to get two people to commit uh, period, let alone two people to commit before they can actually touch it. So Beth, what if if the zoning board were to approve it, the question is, would we do it contingent upon the planning board making that that condition, or just wait till after the planning board makes a decision? And if if the if it's approved with that condition, then the zoning board would join in. Is that the interpretation from town council then? I have to be honest, I don't remember the exact interpretation from town council. Well, I remember I go every, back and take a look at it. Yeah. And I do remember grappling with this <laughs> two years ago. So I, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and I, I remember the designation we made um, that night, mm -hmm. but it was, it was not something working as I remember with the, with the conditions put by the. Uh, right. That uh, was a condition we put on it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we so could. That makes we it could proceed. Yeah, we so can proceed. Right. Um, so there's four members of the zoning board here. If they have any other questions, I think now's the time to bring on any other points they want to clarify. Anybody from the zoning board have a- Peter, Jessup, don't forget to unmute yourself, Peter. Uh, 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 two things, I guess. It's, it's just from a common sense point of view. I don't know. This, but it seems to make sense to have the planning board approve the tower and then the ZV, the zoning board approve the variance. I mean, it seems to have a, it doesn't seem to make sense to approve a variance if there's nothing to have, if, if the structure hasn't been approved by the planning board. For that. And then, that, I agree ahead. with that. Um, and then when you were, I was looking in our, in our regs for these, the seven, the seven, issues upon which we can make our decision. And when you were reading one down, was there one or two that mentioned health in there, Mark? I'm sorry, no. I don't know. No. No. Uh, well, um, not specifically, no. Okay, I thought I heard that. No. Um, are you, you wondering about that? Because a great deal of the discussion last Tuesday had to do with health. Right, right. Um, 
I would like to make a comment about that at some point, whether it's right now. Anybody else in the zoning board have a question or a comment? Not um, me, I'm all set. Okay, I'd, I'd like sort of to address that a little bit because I, I spent the, a good deal of the, in fact, the last two years checking out some points that, that Fran had made two years ago about um, the, the requirements, if that's a fair word, of the, of the FCC to fill in uh, gaps in cell phone coverage. And it really limited the latitude that local um, boards had in towns. And what I did this winter and spring is I, I, I found some documentation and actually spoke to, um, to, to attorneys of the FCC who got me some other documentation. And one thing that I learned over this was that because we had a lot of very angry, fearful, adamant um, points that were made last Tuesday about the health consequences and how the FCC comes about making the standards they have in terms of um, radio frequency uh, tr uh, transmission and the, the da health dangers of that. And one thing that I found, um, and this found in many sources, what the FCC uh, has followed the standards set by ANSI and in ANSI, the uh, American National uh, Standards Institute is completely independent from the, the, the government. And so the standards they set in many different areas, uh, one of them has to do with uh, radio frequency transmissions. And it's something that um, has been deemed dependable, even though there certainly was a lot of disagreement with that um, stated last week. But it's also been shown that uh, the courts in any court challenges will not honor um, protests and suits that don't aren't consistent with the, uh, the standards that ANSI has set. And so in that way, we are limited in terms of um, not having unassailable reasons for denying um, a, a special permit or a variance based on health standards. Um, if, the, if, we're not, if we insist on something more stringent than what ANSI has set. So I just wanna you know, say that we're doing this carefully, but it's also something that the courts have really you know, set in, uh, in responding to different challenges being made on that. And, uh, and we, in, in fact, um, local boards have lost in court cases when they have not been consistent with, uh, with following those recommendations. So I, I just, I want to, you know, get that out there. Was that something that was very clear in all the research and all the, the people I had spoken to? Um, so I, th I don't know if that addresses, you know, questions like you're asking Peter about, about health standards and how to deal with that, but, but it's something that was very clear, I think. And if we're just set arbitrarily or nefariously by the FCC, uh, that'd be one thing, but that's not the case. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, people from the planning board have any specific questions or comments that they wanna make at this time. Uh, you can direct it to the general room here or specifically to Mr. Parisi or Tom Johnson. So that would be if um, you can, yes, Susan, thank you. I, I just am curious. Um, so at this point you have a permit for another tower in Conway and that has not started construction because you have not yet been able to identify a carrier. Is that why that has not started construction? There's a lot of reasons, but that's one of them, yes. The, the, and the, the other reasons, reasons are supply are, are chain. Basically COVID, COVID related and supply chain related and um, the world related. It, uh, um, we have struggled in a lot of towns similarly because of this. I have a question in that case. Why, why propose a new tower? <coughs> You're not able to build the first one, other than the obvious reasons of you know, giving a, everything else set up in order to, uh, to go about filling in those gaps. Um, the need doesn't change, just the uh, development timing. Uh, the, the gap doesn't go away. Um, and we're quite confident as an applicant that um, this is going to happen. Uh, we've invested a lot of time and money 
And um, to be quite frank, we don't have um, complete control over the development schedule. Uh, Conway has been um, very um, expeditious and uh, easy to get through the permitting process. Other towns aren't so easy. Um, and so, uh, um, and, and, you know, we just, you know, we, we have to move forward notwithstanding the pandemic. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's really what has slowed things down. It doesn't change our um, desire or our motivation to go forward on, and we call it Conway One or with Conway Two or with Ashfield, because uh, we're quite confident that all of them are gonna get built eventually. Thank you. Susan, was that the uh, last part of your question as well? Yes, yeah. thank you. Anybody else from the um, planning board have uh, specific questions or um, non-specific questions even that relate really to this part of it? I don't, if you, Oh, if you're raising your hand, Joe. Joe's raising his hand. Joe, um, Joe. I guess I'm going to introduce the elephant in the room. Um, okay. I listened to the seminar on, on people from New Hampshire. Um, and a couple of the things that are challenging for me are um, insulating houses so that the radiation cannot get inside the houses. Um, shielding, I guess it's technically called. And then the other is um, <coughs> distance from from dwellings or residences to cell towers. And I wonder if Fran or, or Tom could address those two issues. Um, I, I suspect the undertow is health, but they're not directly related to health. Uh, I would say it's clearly related to health. Uh, and I'm not ducking it because uh, I hate the lawyer responses, um, notwithstanding what Mr. Silverman just said. That's the standard lawyer response. Uh, 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 I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> uh, uh, there, there's been an immense amount of research. Um, there are people who have different opinions, even with science. Uh, but uh, um, the, the authorities, the, uh, the, the governing authorities, the... Uh, um, the FCC and all its uh, consulting agencies have, have deemed this safe. Um, the state of New Hampshire commissioned a study that wasn't even universally adopted. There was dissents within that study. There were uh, uh, um, questions raised, but they didn't have the authority to make law. They simply passed on their recommendations to the state legislature and the FCC. Uh, uh, and nothing has happened, notwithstanding that. Uh, I will tell you, I've not heard of um, shielding or um, coating houses or whatever was raised uh, before today, to be quite frankly. Uh, uh, I, no one's ever raised it before in my world. Uh, um, um, it, you know, we've, we've built um, many, many facilities much closer and on top of residential structures. I've built facilities much closer to schools and other churches and other places of assembly. Uh, um, we've built them on hospitals. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, we've been living with this technology for a very long time. And there's an immense amount of research that supports the safety of it. And the, uh, so, um, you know, the, uh, the recommendations from that report were just, you know, a few people's opinion and, and not based on, on true science or anything like that. <laughs> that is pathetic. <laughs> Thank you, Fran. Beth, are you muted? Beth, Beth, are you muted? Beth, your voice. <laughs> Beth, you're muted. You're Sorry. 
So um, maybe I muted myself too soon. I'm asking people to sign in on the um, <coughs> chat with your name, your address, your affiliation. Benny, if you're not speaking, if you haven't been called on, please mute yourself. <laughs> and then remember to unmute yourself when you're getting ready to speak. Um, I do want to um, specifically mention something about, um, we have received a number of public comments uh, from email. Those will be part of the public record uh, for people who are joining us late. This meeting is being recorded uh, over Zoom and will be posted on our website as well as the minutes will be available. Um, anything that was received over email will be included in the public record. I probably just said that. Um, so uh, if you submitted a public comment over email, you don't need to repeat it tonight. It will be part of the public record. Um, so, um, I want to just mention something in terms of um, the way that the planning board approves special permit applications. The thing that we are legally required to do is to pay attention to our specific bylaw. And we go like piece by piece through the bylaw comparing the application to how, how it matches up with the bylaws. Um, our bylaws have been, uh, as, as I attempted to talk about um, last time, but also Mark uh, brought up this time, um, any uh, uh, health um, concerns um, are not addressed in Article 8 wireless communication facilities. And that is a long explanation. And I know that many, many people here are aware of, of why that is. And um, for me, the short sentence of why that is, is because we are actually not, we are prohibited from, from um, engaging with that sort of, um, sort of thing. And um, I also wanna point out another thing, which we often forget about. Downtown Conway has had a cell tower facility uh, right in the center of town for how many years? Does, does anyone know how many years it's been there on Orchard Equipment? Has it been more than a decade? I think it's been more than a decade. Do you know, Joe, when that, when that, so? I don't, re I don't remember specifically, but yes, okay. longer than a decade. Yeah, so I'm just bringing that up. We, we have a cell tower. It's in, it's in a residential neighborhood. It's been there for quite some time, um, just as a fact. Um, so are there other members of the planning board who might have direct questions or uh, comments that they wanna make? Um, Susan. So um, uh, yeah, it's Susan Fenton, member of the planning board. So in this New Hampshire um, document that was circulated to us uh, for our uh, to, for us to read and consider, um, the, there was a comment that said that um, the setback for all new cell towers should be 500 meters, uh, which translates to 1,600 feet from any residential building. And from my view of the site, I believe that this cell tower is farther away than 1600 feet from any residence, but I just wondered if you had a comment on that. I, we haven't looked at it. It's not law. It's, it's like I said, one man's recommendation. No, um, I know. I was just curious. I, 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 I'll be honest. I haven't looked at it. Uh, I'm going to ask Tom to look at the site plans and um, I would say he will answer the question, although not off the top of his head. Uh, I, and I'd say you're pretty close. I, I just don't know exactly, but I'd say, um, you know, we're um, substantially set farther back than the uh, water tank in the center of town or the uh, uh, cell tower on Berkshire East or the cell tower in Deerfield. Uh, so I, I, uh, I think we've done a pretty good job of citing it as- Yeah, I was, I was, just, I was just curious. Thank you. So it's also unclear to me with this 500 meters, which I, I think 
whatever, wherever this came from, let's just stick with it for right now because my curiosity is basically, are, are people measuring this from the base of the tower or the top of the tower, which would mean that it would be, like, I don't understand where the measurement comes from. And, I, and I'm just bringing that up because it seems like it's an example to me of something that gets um, into the public discourse and then accept it as some sort of uh, standard. And I'm not sure, you know, what what the basis for it might be. Um, but perhaps one of the things that would help the discussion is if we knew how, um, how far the residences were from the what? Base of the tower? Top of the tower? That would seem to be the, uh, that would seem to be the recommendation in this particular document was that uh, the setback for all new cell towers shall be 500 meters. And that I, I'm, I would interpret that to mean the setback from the construction site, but that's just my interpretation. Mm -hmm. So um, because of my fabulous, uh, <laughs> strange setup here, I can't really see everybody at once. So um, if you do want to speak and you're from the planning board, either raise your hand or put it in the chat and I'll notice it and, and call on you or just interrupt me, thank word. Um, I see that some people have raised their hands and the order of this um, public hearing is the same as it has been, which is the planning board and the zoning board ask questions first, then people from the, um, people from the town. So any town departments that are here that have questions and then abutters, um, and in this case, uh, if the landowner wanted to speak as an abutter, that would be fine with me. And then um, we'll open it to um, other, other public comment. So uh, is there anybody from the planning board that has anything to say? And if not at this time, not to say you can't speak later, you can. Um, um, if not, then Anyone from our town? Uh, I know that someone from the Conservation Commission is here and I'm wondering if they have any specific questions or comments to make. Uh, I do not have any specific questions or comments. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Bruton. Um, and anyone else from our town? No? Okay. So um, what about any abutters? direct abutters to this proposed piece. Lobby, no, nothing to say. Anyone else? Okay. So um, I can open this up to questions from um, people who are, who are residents of Conway. And again, I would say if you wrote us, thank you for your comments, we have them. They will be part of the public record. I would prefer you not to repeat them at this hearing. Um, we've, we've read them. We will include them in the public record and we'll take them into account. So um, if you have, if you didn't write to us and you have something to say, or if you have something entirely different than what you said in your, in your comments, then, um, I, I'll call on you. So who is here? I think we've got Devlin put into the chat that she wants to be recognized. So I'm gonna recognize Devlin Selman. Thank you, Beth. Uh, I just wanted to go over um, the meeting last week. I reviewed it, uh, the video, and uh, because I was scrambling with my notes, I, I recorded some <clears throat> segments of the video that I thought we should all listen to again from what Fran was saying and also uh fred goldstein was saying regarding the um signals and holding the phone up to your ear because i, I had mentioned my aunt had a brain tumor removed and i was a bit yeah. concerned about health and i'm hoping that's okay that i'm bringing this up but i just want to like let everybody listen to what fran and uh fred said 
No, I, no, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. I don't, I don't think this is an appropriate um, thing to be doing. I'm not sure. Can, um, can you just summarize what it is that you're concerned about? Okay, basically, um, and I guess it's, it's on, it's been recorded, so it's been documented, but uh, the, the radius, the circle uh, was going to be around 90 homes. We're going to have solid coverage of for cell phone service. Um, and then 137 homes, uh, it's like a lower probability uh, for having a weak signal. And when I was concerned about, you know, getting the radiation, um, Fred Goldstein was talking about, well, if you only have one bar of service, your phone's going to be working a lot harder. And, um, and you, I wouldn't want to be on my phone all day with one bar of service because it's going to be putting out more of that signal. And when you're closer to a cell phone tower, it's a lot less of a, an intense signal because it's right there. It doesn't have to work very hard. So I've basically gotten out of that statement, 137 homes are going to have like one bar of service. And for people that don't have Bluetooth, what that Fred mentioned, oh, everybody should get Bluetooth. Uh, not everybody's going to be able to talk uh, on Bluetooth with their cell phones. And a lot of people hold their phones up to their ear. So they are getting that higher level of, of intense cell phone uh, radiation, whatever you want to call it. And the other, the last little segment that I recorded was one minute, or I'm sorry, one hour and 59 minutes. You can write down that time into the meeting last week where Fran was kind of going off, no offense, Fran, but you were kind of babbling on about how everything is unknown. There are so many unknowns and why we're afraid is because there are so many unknowns. And I think that's pretty valid when you can actually say, yeah, we're concerned because there are so many unknowns, that's valid. We don't know what we're getting into. And with the radiation, with everything else, I think we need to be pretty cautious. Thank so you. I can I can make a comment to that because I remember those exact parts of the meeting and my recollections were completely different. First of all, Fred Goldstein was was expressing his personal opinion. He was not offering a scientific opinion with respect to the effect of radiation. He was speaking extemporaneously. With respect to Fran, same thing. People who are expressing their opinions in this meeting and they should not be construed or be part of the public record in this meeting as being scientific fact when in fact it's a public it's a personal opinion so i completely disagree with your assertions i'm sorry you, that you disagree Ellis. but i i i uh, we can agree to disagree because those statements were said and i don't understand why they would make a comment if they hadn't read about that or learned about that in the past thank you Um, thank you. Are there any, um, I see that there are some people here who are, appear to be abutters to the cell tower. And, and if you didn't hear me before, um, this would be a time for you to speak if you'd like to. <clears throat> but if not, we'll go on to any other um, public questions or comments that are out there. Okay. Um, if I'm not seeing you, I apologize. You can unmute and yell loudly. Okay. Are we good? All right. We have we have Jonathan Marin has his a hand signal on there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I and mean, I was moving through like Conway residents okay. first. Conway but if we've heard from all the Conway residents that we're gonna hear from in this section, this doesn't mean you can't speak later. It's just an order that we're trying to stick with. Um, so um, I can recognize uh, Jonathan Merritt. Thank you, Beth. Um, yeah, I just wanted to clarify uh, since I believe it was Liz and yeah, thank Joe for being at the webinar last night with Kent Chamberlain. Um, and that link to that webinar for anyone who wants to watch it was submitted to the ZBA and the um, planning board, which I think really clarifies, you know, how, you know, this 500 meter mark um, 
I want to clarify also um, Mr. Parisi's comments, mischaracterizing the commission as a study, who was a commission of independent experts who then brought in uh, nine experts. Eight of those nine experts they brought in concurred that uh, radio frequency radiation has serious health effects. The one who didn't concur was the only one that was paid and that person represented the telecom industry. So uh, it's a really incredible presentation. I encourage you to watch it. It clarifies a lot of the things about also that um, the head of the ZBA, I'm not seeing your name right now, <clears throat> brought up about how we came up with these, how these standards got evolved. Um, but my point is, I'm not gonna repeat anything I've sent in, but um, I just wanna clarify uh, Joe's question about shielding. Um, you know, essentially what the commission found was that people within 500 meters are gonna be at a higher cancer risk and uh, for various other problems. So um, you could go ahead and approve it, you know, not deny it on the basis of health, which we know is a no-no. Um, of course, you could deny it for other reasons um, that a, a number of which have been submitted to the board, but uh, you could uh, approve it and then simply require as a condition that those within 500 meters uh, who would like to have shielding uh, for their homes paid for uh, by the applicant um, could do that. That way, at least uh, the town of Conway would be covered. You'd be covered individually in terms of um, really minimizing any potential uh, uh, injury uh, for those people that are cle that clearly, you know, will be injured if you if you actually do follow the science. So, um, can I ask you a question? Where is this science? You're you're talking about all these experts, but you're not in your spoken remarks right now providing any citations provide some citations well you want me to actually read the the science no, to no you? i want you to summarize where these where these studies were published were they peer reviewed they were peer reviewed Did and in the new hampshire report they're all hyperlinked in the new hampshire report which has been no 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 you are making the assertion Support your assertion by not saying to people, go out and find it for yourself. No, I'm not asking you to find it for yourself. It's in the PDF that was sent. It's all hyperlinked there. Right, uh, but I'm not, open, you know. If you'd like me to open the PDF, not they're reading it to you. Let me finish my statement. Yes. It is not sufficient to expect the people making a decision to merely follow your hyperlinks so that they can process for themselves whether or not your assertions are correct. I mean, that's just not how an argument is well-crafted. Okay, uh, Phyllis, I, 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 just, I don't think that's what he's doing. I, I think he's citing to the New Hampshire report, uh, which in turn, as if I understand correctly, uh, did seem to cite to uh, other reports. And I think the point that he's making, whether or not we agree with him, um, is something that uh, can fairly be made without coming with a stack of uh, citations. Yeah, I disagree with that. Okay. I'm, I'm going to interject here. Which is, fact is an opinion. I'm going to interject something here, which is that um, <laughs> this New Hampshire report, um, it's long. And there's also a portion of it that is the minority uh, re report. And the minority report also cites a number of studies, scientific studies. Uh, it, the, it's interesting to me that um, there's a lot of information there it's contradictory to each other. Right. <laughs> and um, I just want to state that for the, for the record here. So um, That's right. I, I understand that people are concerned about, about health effects. I, I, there's a, there's a lot of things to be concerned about uh, for our individual health, for our family health. We care a, a great deal as people who serve the town uh, about a lot of a lot, about a lot of issues that affect people's health. You have to, you can trust me on that or you can not trust me on that. But it, uh, for speaking, speaking for myself, I, I, uh, I care about my health. I care about my family's health. I have lived through a number of scary diagnoses and um, uh, treatments in my immediate family. And, um, it's difficult and uh, and it's a uh, it's um, a hard thing to navigate. But I have to keep pulling us back to the fact that we we are um, bound by our bylaw, and our bylaw um, has very specific things that we can consider when 
navigating a special permit. The Conway Board of, where does the Conway Board of Health stand on this issue? I, I, I can't imagine that they are taking a stand on this issue. I, I, I would refer people to the Pittsfield Board of Health, which was, is uh, Verizon is now um, suing the Pittsfield Board of Health for taking a stand on this issue as of this week. Um, and uh, I believe in federal court. Um, and I'm not saying this because uh, I, I don't want the town to get sued, although I truly don't want our town to get sued, but it's our, it's our obligation to follow our, our particular bylaws. And in terms of health, we, we cannot address um, health as part of our decision-making um, process. I think those are great, great. I think those are great points, Beth, and I. I um, that's why my suggestion, and I think the suggestion of several other people who have written in, is that you know, since it looks like you, the overall consensus from the first meeting was that you know, you are going to approve the tower, but then you are able to write in conditions, and so you're able to. You're not going to be denying it on the basis of health, but you know, just just as human beings who understand that, you know, you're capable of reading and looking at peer-reviewed research and and sort of the history of how we got here, uh, which I think the one hour presentation that you have the recording of does an excellent job of summarizing in a relatively short period of time, um, you know, that you can simply write in a condition that would make it quite a bit safer for those who will be most seriously impacted without running afoul of, um, you know, denying on the basis of health. And you're suggesting sh this shielding thing is what okay. you're suggesting as a condition, I, I, again, this is something that feels like so far beyond our ability as a board to implement. I, yeah, which I, I, I totally sympathize with that. And that's why um, in my letter, I, I mentioned that Ken Chamberlain is willing to donate his time pro bono to just, he could even just talk you through what that would even look like um, in a relatively short period of time and just to okay. give you a sense of what that would mean. Okay, yeah. So I just want to reiterate for the rest of the group here that uh, several of the comments that we received via email referred to shielding homes within 500 meters of the cell tower, proposed Only cell for those, tower. Just the homes that wanted it, of course. Just the homes that wanted it. Um, has any home, I guess one question would be, has any anyone tested uh, given all the notice that they would like um, shielding, whatever that means. And who is, who is, is this Andy? It's Andy, yeah. I'm just curious Hi. if we actually heard from anybody in light of the discussion at the last meeting, hey, I'd like shielding, you know, please condition approval on this. I, I don't, uh, again, so I said- Why, are we, why are we having this discussion if it's yeah, outside the scope yeah. of this meeting? I don't yeah. even understand that. Okay. No, no, I'm just it's curious. Not the, it's not within the authority of the of the, of the of the zoning board of appeals, and it's not within the authority of planning board to consider health. So why are we considering health? No, no, we I'm, don't I'm, have the we don't have the authority to do that. I understood. I just I have one characterization. You you certainly can. You just can't justify a, a, a denial based on health. You certainly. It's, they haven't actually said you're not allowed to talk about it. Um, you can't discuss it. No, that's not, what's it. being asked is that we actually consider it as part of our decision. That's what I'm hearing. Right. Well, uh, I think that what, I, the, what I'm pointing out is I don't think anyone, any of the abutters have even asked for this. Um, well, I think they don't yeah. they know about it. Um, as why, a, because it's being suggested. That's why they're finding out about it. And it's being, you are suggesting that they, that they demand it. Are you not? I'm not suggesting they demand anything. I it just it's well, you are recommending it. Well, I'm I'm recommending you consider it based on on. And I'm saying, and I'm it. saying that it's outside of the scope of the authority in the zoning board of appeals to consider health. And in addition, I mean, the point I'm making is that, you know, this has been, you know, the meetings have been publicized, right? Um, and we had a meeting of full discussion last week. So yes, even if we could, yes. even if one assumed for the moment. Uh, that this was some a condition we could impose, uh, I, I would be reluctant if to to do so, since you know no one within that distance has shown up and said that they would like this to be imposed. No one who falls within that, you know, even if we could do it, no one's asked. No one who's affected yeah. has asked us to do it. 
Can I have a point of clarification, Beth? Yes. So yes, please. A lot of a lot of this dialogue is going on, and I appreciate the dialogue. I I I believe in people sharing their opinions, but it seems to me that the only thing that, that is before the ZBA is whether or not the height is okay. That is correct. And if there were any shielding or other sorts of considerations to be taken into consideration, that would be a planning board issue. Am I am I yeah. It, you're right. I'm okay with that. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. So, so I would, I would, I would hope that the dialogue about shielding, and I'm not sure whether that's a condition that we can impose. I know we can impose a variety of different conditions, um, but I don't know if that's one of them. I certainly would be willing to look into it, and I certainly would be interested in knowing how many houses are within 500 meters of the tower. But, um, but uh, I, I don't know that this particular dialogue is helpful to our decision right now. Okay, yes, I agree with you. And I think we're going to bring this one to a close for yeah. right now. And Peter, I'm gonna call one more on- person. Peter had his hand up also. Peter, Peter, and then uh, Barbara Melville will be next after Peter. It, it was mostly to Susan's point about the discussion. Thanks. It's not appropriate for ZBA. It was about the health at all. We're on height and it's more for a, a, the planning board to discuss. Okay. That. So that's, that's. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Peter. And I'm going to call on Barbara Melville. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, I would rather know that I can call for help anytime that I need to in this area, uh, whether it's winter going off the road in the winter going for a hike on my own land and you know falling and being injured i would rather know that i can call for help than to worry about radiation that thousands and thousands and thousands of millions probably of cell towers around the world are in existence and the number of um, issues, health issues that have scientifically been proven so far uh, seem to be, maybe there are some, I'm not denying that there are some, but uh, the numbers seem to be so minuscule um, that again, I would rather be able to call for help than worry myself sick over whether I'm going to get cancer from any of these millions of cell towers around the world. Thank you, Barbara. So um, it is now almost nine o'clock. So we've been continuing this hearing for about an hour. Um, we've heard from a number of people. We've received public comment from a number of people. And um, I'm, I'm thinking that we've uh, taken in quite a lot of information. And I'm wondering, um, what our next uh, step would be um, before we move to before we get ready to move to deliberation. So, um, Susan, uh, Beth, um, I I'm wondering if it's possible for Vertex to tell us how many residences are within 500 feet of the tower, just as a matter of curiosity and, okay. and information for our our decision. 500 okay. meters. I'm 500, sorry, 500 meters. Thank 500 you. Thank meters. you, Phyllis. 500 meters. 1,640 feet. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, this is not science. This is Fran looking at it while you guys were chatting. Um, I counted three houses within uh, 500 meters, um, one of which the abutter spoke just now, um, and one of which the other abutter spoke last week in favor of the tower. Um, the, um, um, we had several comments uh, similar to the landowner uh, from abutters um, uh, that uh, expressed um, the support for the tower based on the safety value of it as opposed to the risks involved with it. Uh, and, uh, and I think that speaks for itself. But uh, I, I, we're talking three or four thank, houses. Thank you, Fran. Thank you. I was I was wondering. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for the information. Um, there's more than that, just by the way. There's many more than three or four, including I, the, the Ricardis. I, I 
please don't, uh, please raise your hand before you speak so I can call on you, thanks. Um, um, so I'm gonna turn to uh, people who know, who understand more than me about joint public hearings and ask um, what our next steps might be in terms of, are we ready to um, take all the comments and the information and the answers and the reporting and the presentations that we've received and are we ready to move on to the next phase of this process which would be um, starting the deliberation phase. Um, and I'm gonna direct this question to Joe because you're unfortunately, <laughs> you're still here working on these things, Joe. <laughs> um, and ask you what, um, what would be our uh, like next part of this if we were gonna um, move to deliberation? <coughs> well, my um, thought would be that the first step would be to close the public comment hearing. Uh -huh. um, that I believe that does not prevent us from going uh -huh. back to any one of these people for clarification or additional information. Okay. But the, the time for public comment gets closed when we close the public hearing. Um, for me personally, I guess I need to know if all five of you are going to stay through the deliberations, in which case I'm uh, useless, <laughs> so to speak. Um, my purpose here was to fill in if someone couldn't participate in the hearings and in the deliberation. So at some point I may be stepping out of this, but um, <clears throat> I think you should close the public hearing public comment hearing and schedule uh, deliberation. It's getting late, so I would assume you yeah. don't yes, want to right. deliberate tonight. No, I personally, and I'm, I'm gonna check in with Mark on this, I don't think that we can um, uh, deliberate tonight. There's a lot to sort through. And um, I, I wasn't suggesting that we move to the deliberation phase tonight as a, as a planning board. And I didn't know if Mark was interested in doing that, but, um, I would suggest that we um, uh, think about closing the public hearings uh, comment period of this and move to the deliberation phase. And that would probably be after town meeting because town meeting is June 4th and we have to um, do a lot there. So we would, um, we would be moving it probably most reasonably to our to the uh, planning board regularly scheduled planning board meeting date of uh, June. Ah, what would that be? Can't believe it. Sixteenth. I can't believe it's already nine, June sixteenth. No, not June nine. June, June, June next nine. one. That'd be the sixteenth, right? It would be the sixteenth. Um, that's that's the third Thursday. Third Thursday, it would be the third Thursday. So what do other, um, so Mark? I guess, I guess we've established step there. Yeah. We've established that, whoops. Just no, now, sorry. Yeah. Um, we've established that um, if the zoning board were to approve this, the uh, grant the variance, it still is tied to the planning board's um, contingent approval, mm -hmm. uh, conditional approval of the yeah. special permit. So I think we were, we were entertaining whether, you know, we'd be able to make a decision tonight and clearly that's not gonna be able to be possible for the planning board. So it's it's not relevant what the zoning board wants to do because we're still tied to your, your needs and your decision-making process. Therefore, I would say, if you're gonna be continuing the meeting once again, or the hearing once again, I think that we need to fall suit we're not um, exactly continuing I, the hearing. Or we're, we would consider closing the hearing and then hearing. moving to the deliberation phase. Right. So, pardon me. The, but, yes, but the deliberation phase, which also entails the making a decision. Yeah. Uh, hopefully the next time, but ultimately at some point, then uh, we're, we're tied to you. So I'm, I'm going to say that I can't say I'm going to 
enthusiastically speak for everybody, but I think um, we need to to do to defer to the decision the planning board makes about whether to uh, to go on to another date for the um, for the next stage okay. of the of the decision making process. Um, any any lawyerly types have thoughts on that? Um, could I comment on that? Um, sure, you're I, a lawyerly I, type. I agree with Mr. Silverman that it would be convenient to have the planning board and uh, zoning board vote concurrently, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, and um, the both the planning board and the zoning board uh, crafted well uh, reasoned and um, I think advised by council decisions the last time. So we have templates for the decision. I agree it might be an appropriate condition to add to the zoning board decision that it is contingent on um, planning board approval of the special permit, uh, but that's really all we're adding. So I think the plan the zoning board could meet, um, could convene at any time, uh, conveniently with the planning board or at its own schedule, including tonight. Sure. Um, yeah. I guess my response to that is what, what happened two years ago. And even though we try to discount precedent and something like this, but it still was a lesson to be learned that the, um, the special permit was actually granted by the planning board months after the variance was granted by the um, Zoning Board of Appeals. And that, that made a real mess in terms of extensions that you needed to have. Um, hopefully we don't need extensions this time. Right. Um, Hopefully, <laughs> uh, you're right, and and but it, it would just require me to come back on a staggered schedule like we did this time. Um, uh, I that would not be. Uh, I, I'm it would to me it wouldn't be a reason to postpone making a decision tonight. And I'm also thinking for the convenience of the zoning board, who seems more ready to make a decision than the planning board, and like I said, has a form of of, of decision already drafted with one new condition that's relatively easy to add. Um, we're also just as a point of uh, for everybody clarification is that the Conservation Commission um, is uh, having a meeting later this month that, and they'll be addressing some pieces of this application and um, personally I, I'm interested in finding out what what their recommendations would be and what their orders of condition would be. So I, I guess I'd like to ask other members of the zoning board with this in mind, what, what you want to do. Peter. I'm, I don't see any advantage to voting tonight. Um, I don't see a disadvantage to waiting. I guess I, that's that's my point. I don't see a disadvantage to waiting and, and putting it all together in one package. Right, I agree with Peter because the decision that needs to be made by the zoning board is so limited with respect to what, what the subject of the variance is. There's no benefit, there's no public benefit for the zoning board to make its decision now. So Andy, what do you think? I agree. So um, Beth, could, where'd you go? There you are. Um, you keep popping all over the place. Not my um, fault, really sitting Mark, in one Mark, place. Mark, yes. I, I wonder if you could vote, but make the effective date, the date that the planning board issues its order of conditions. So that the timing starts on the same day. If if that's really the, if the issue is timing, I it, I don't know whether you could vote to grant the variance, but it becomes effective not the day you voted it, but the day we issue the special permit. So Can that I, the, ti the timing is synchronized. If if that's the issue, I don't I don't quite understand why that is an issue. It's probably only a month or two different. And well, I don't think, and I think Fran's prepared to deal with it, but we possibly you could arrange the start date or, or the effective date to be the same as ours. Can you um, help us, Susan? <laughs> I'm going to recognize Susan Fenton. No, I just wanted to clarify that um, the planning board has not made a decision to grant this variance. This is, right. I want to be sure that this is not, nobody in this meeting should assume that the planning board is necessarily going to grant this variance. And I, 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 I appreciate Fran, your enthusiasm for the project, but I wanna make it clear to everybody in this meeting that this is not a Thank decision you. we have made. We are going to deliberate and take everything into consideration. Yes. That being Thank said, Beth, I'm going to move that the hearing, that the public hearing be closed. Okay. 
Um, I do want to recognize that um, Alice Vigliani asked that all members of the planning board and zoning board get to read the email comments. Yes, I want to assure everyone who sends in public comments that we do pay attention to it, we do read it, and it becomes part of our of the public record. So yes. Um, Beth, can I ask okay. one question about scheduling? If, yes. if we were to piggyback and make it a joint deliberation, whether it's that deliberating together or just one after the other, is that something that can be done to, to tie together the decision-making process were both boards to, to grant approval? I, I'm thinking that would make it a pretty long meeting. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if it's practical. But we still have to post, you you know, you have to post it as, as a zoning board meeting. Yes. Um, and we have to post publicly post it as a planning board meeting. Um, um, I think this is something that we, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I, I think it would make it, um, we're tied together in some ways, but we're also not. Do you know what I mean? I, you know, the one, Susan, help. <laughs> no, um, so what I would recommend, and I think this has already been recommended, Mark, but what I would recommend is that Zoning Board of Appeals do its deliberation, decide on the variance, make your vote, and if that vote is a positive vote, make it contingent on the on the planning board's approval of their of their of the uh, uh, permit um, with whatever conditions the planning board might impose, and that way. Um, yours will be in effect as soon as ours is in effect. That seems to me to, to be the best way to, to manage that. But which, um, which, which was Joe's suggestion? Yes, I'm, I'm yeah. agreeing with Joe then. <laughs> I'm agreeing with it's Joe always also. a good position to take. <laughs> yeah. To accommodate everyone's concerns here, I actually think if the zoning board might convene an hour or two hours before the planning board reconvenes, then you have the same date. Uh, uh, um, uh, along the lines of what, what Ms. Fenton just said. Okay, so that would be helpful to Fran and Tom. So, right. going board, any anybody have any comment about having um, our deliberation meeting right before the or the same evening as the um, the planning board meeting on the sixteenth of June, Peter? I think that's a good idea. Um, I don't really feel like deliberating tonight. So it's getting yeah. late and uh, right. I had a long day. So, could, uh, I, could I ask one personal favor? I have a conflict on the 16th. Was June 9th an option um, no. as an alternative? No, it's not. Um, I'm out of the country on business on June 9th. Yeah. I mean, um, we haven't set our July schedule yet. Um, so, um, I'm not interested in going into July. Uh, um, you might Good recall time. that we were patient in skipping over the month of May. Um, uh, I don't know that we need to go into July. Can Tom be your proxy that night? Yeah, so we'll, we will have coverage on June 16th, but that's only okay. okay. So um, I'm going to refer back to Susan's motion to, um, she made a motion to close the hearing, close the public hearing. Sorry, just if Beth wants to incorporate the conservation committee information that is upcoming, that means um, you wouldn't be able to do that if you close the hearing right now. No, Beth yes, said that can. we are still able to take comments from anybody and further input from other people that's still able to be submitted to us and will be considered in our deliberations. It's just not the public hearing anymore. Okay, thanks. And Beth, and your, your meeting's at eight o'clock, right? Our meetings are at seven o'clock. Okay. Our, our regularly scheduled meetings are at seven o'clock. We would probably do regular planning board business and then turn to the deliberation piece of this later and, in the evening. So, and I don't know what time that would be. So roughly eight o'clock, something similar to what we did this evening. Pro probably yeah. earlier, yeah. Okay, so we'll go Quarter through the, eight. the yeah. movement process after you do that. Yeah. Okay, so back yeah. to Susan's motion. Yeah. This yes. is George, one final question. Thank you. Um, I, I'm not sure we got a solid answer from uh, uh, Mr. Parisi about the number of homes within that number of meters. Um, perhaps we could have that information at some point. Okay. 
And Within the 500 that, meters? Okay. It's nice to yeah. do a back of the envelope calculation tonight, but I think it'd be better to have the actual uh, okay. instrument, precise information before we deliberate. Okay. That's what we're requesting of you for text tower assets, reps. Um, the you. answer to that is yes. Um, my only response is um, I believe the planning board made a very thoughtful and well-crafted decision the last time with advice of council. And uh, I can't say that any deviation from that will um, be acceptable to the applicant. Um, yeah, I, I get it. Um, so uh, uh, that's up uh, to you. And, and uh, uh, I'm not a biologist, I'm a, a lawyer, and uh, I have to defer to your counsel in that regard. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll look back at the advice of counsel. <laughs> um, so um, we're still back at this motion, I think. But thank you, George, for the clarification. Yeah. I don't think it ever was seconded, Beth. So no, I think wasn't. we're okay. <laughs> I'll second it, Susan. <laughs> I'd like to suggest an amendment. I don't, I don't okay. think that we should leave the, it open for more public comment by mail. I think once you close the hearing, yeah. it's done. I don't. That's I don't right. think. I don't think we should accept any more public comments personally. Right. Oh, okay. This just goes on forever. I mean, we we're closing the the public hearing, the oral, if you will, the oral part, and I think we need to close the written part as well. Okay. If we have questions, we can come back to people. We have the right to ask them questions. We have the right to ask for clarification of anyone and we have the right to ask, yeah, we have the right to do that. That's a very good point. Does this change Susan's motion? Susan simply moved to close the hearing. Yeah. But right. might wanna clarify that, what yes. we mean by that, so, which. So which while is, our meetings are always going to be public, publicly posted, oh, Bruton's hand is up, okay. Is your hand up, Bruton? Veronique is pointing this out to me. Yes, thank you, Veronique. Uh, it's you guys our are conservation in, you, commission. Yeah, you guys are in the middle of a motion. I don't want to interrupt that, but I just wanted to make sure that we coordinate. Uh, it seems it's nice when you guys make your decisions first so that we can kind of piggyback off of y'all. But, okay. but we do have that, like you mentioned, because you mentioned a meeting on next week. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't seem like you guys are going to be having anything until June. Does that sound about right? Right. We are not. Okay. <laughs> hmm. If I could just back up for two seconds, did you guys cover any of the new, are you guys gonna have any input on the construction of the driveway? I know this is out of life, left field, but uh, the amendment that Fran submitted on the 10th uh, with, with- The with, supplement uh, three? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really, the, that's that's a, kind of the new thing that's affecting the CONCOM. And I don't yeah. know if you guys have any comment on that or- um, I think this would be something we would be, um, certainly taking into account for um during our deliberations and okay. if we had questions on it or specific orders of condition we would be directing them to um vertex or the or the concom and the concom right like right. and the conservation commission so okay uh all right that just kind of affects uh our meeting next week and whether or not we continue it or postpone it until you guys are kind of settled um you're this is like a, this is kind of like a Mobius strip, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. But uh, I think you guys have the bigger authority um, here, and we usually, you know, well, different authorities. But well, the wetlands, the wetlands regulation act has really big authority here. No, for sure. But you know, uh, I think it's better when you guys go first. That happened last time, and it was it was nice. I felt like we got ahead of ourselves because we started our hearing before you guys did, and okay. Uh, does complicate things is all. All right. Sorry to sidetrack everybody. No, um, thanks for the thanks for the comments. It's helpful okay. to me. Okay. Um, okay, I've really officially lost track now. Um, we have I seconded the motion to adjourn the okay. hearing all right. and the, the public right. hearing, understanding that that means um, that we won't accept any more written or oral public comment. Right. Yes. And we will be having this, uh, it will continue in a, as a public meeting um, on uh, the 16th of June. 
So that was seconded. All in favor in the planning board? Um, that would be um, Beth Gershman. Madam, um, Madam, Madam Chair, if I could interrupt, yes. you need to say a time certain. Oh, at time certain. Oh, as, as part of the motion, we have to say seven, that. As in 730, is that what we're talking about? No, you or actually I, put the words, right? We're not, wait, wait, I'm sorry. So, friend, the purpose for the time certain is for the beginning of our deliberations. Is that what you're saying? No, uh, just for the continuation of the public meeting. Uh, there is uh, no, there is, the public hearing is being closed. No, I understand we that. We are going to meet again at the planning board meeting for our deliberations. Those are public meetings that need to be posted. It's not a public hearing. No, I understand that. But if the uh, if you're, the planning board meets at a regularly scheduled time, like six o'clock or whatever the regular time is, you should announce that. I, you're 100% you're right. It's not, the meeting is not subject to public comment, but it's people can show up and listen. So they need to know. Yeah, it's, a, it's a public meeting. Yes, of course. Exactly. So you just need to say what regularly, time. That, well, we're closing the public hearing now. Correct. The next well, what time, what time, what time is the, public hearing, I mean, sorry, the public meeting on June 16th. Our meetings begin at seven. Perfect. Does this change the motion at all? No. no. Okay. We were about to do the roll call. I think Beth has okay. brought the vote. So that would be me, I, Beth Gershman. Uh, I, George Forsier. I, Joe. I, Susan. I, I Jennifer Mullins. Hi, Susan Fenton. Is Bill here? Yeah, I see him. <laughs> he's, he's, he's probably muted. muted. <laughs> he's probably muted. Raise your hand, Bill. Okay. That's it. So, That's it. Yes. <laughs> uh, the motion passes, and um, we're going to uh, adjourn this. Well, actually, I have to, we, the zoning board has to do the same thing. All oh, right. Thank yes, you. you do. So, you do. anybody uh, make a duly uh, a motion to have a duly uh, posted meeting for the Zoning Board of Appeals on June 16th at seven o'clock. I have a second. So we have a, a motion and a second. Yes. You're, you're muted, Phyllis. I can't do it in person. I have another business trip. So it'll have to be a virtual for me. Okay. I'll have to figure out how to do that. Um, so all in favor, say uh, aye. 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 And so um, and for me as well. Okay, so we will um, have our deliberation meeting duly posted on the uh, June 16th at seven o'clock. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Thank you all very much for um, attending and participating. And I appreciate everyone's different points of view, I do. And um, I think that's it for tonight, unless someone has something so important to say, but we're, we're done. <laughs> okay, good night. so Thank good you night, be <laughs> well, see you all later. <laughs> Plant your gardens. And Brand sleep well. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, good night. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everybody.